economic growth coming out of the pandemic should be robust, perhaps even coming out ahead of consensus. Uh, this is typically uh, a time when value investing does well. Uh, as core investment managers, we can invest across the entire value growth spectrum, but we have tilted the portfolio more towards those businesses that we think will benefit from a reopening of the economy and accelerating global GDP growth. Well, we try and stay away from characterizing things as value versus growth. I mean, you can say that a company that's growing 25% a year and trading at 35 times earnings is cheap. And a company that's growing at 1% a year that's trading at 10 times earnings is expensive. So it all depends on the context. Now, that being said, we are at a fairly unique point in time here, uh, history-wise. I mean, we're, we're coming out of a global pandemic and, and nobody sort of ever experienced that. Uh, so you've got a world that is awash in money from both fiscal and monetary stimulus. You've got consumers that are relatively flush with cash. I mean, having been on lockdown for you know well over a year, you've got banks that are extremely well capitalized, uh, especially in the U.S. And so we're kind of set up, we think, for a fairly uh, good economic growth coming up over the next, say, call it nine to twelve months. Um, and in that sort of, with that as a backdrop, uh, you've got large swaths of the economy that are growing quite fast. And it's not just, you know, <laughs> uh, SaaS software vendors or pet food companies or uh, e-commerce companies. There's, again, parts of what we consider to be the value parts of the market that are probably being growing uh, quite fast over the next little while. So to answer the question, uh, yes, we think that the uh, this rotation does have some legs as long as uh, the central banks remain accommodative and the world continues to reopen as we come out of this pandemic. We think what worked going into the pandemic is not what's going to work coming out. And we've really positioned the portfolio. We'd, we'd say we calibrated it slightly to be a little bit more pro-cyclical. Uh, at the very least, we're seeing really strong economic data. Uh, of course, we've got very accommodative uh, central banks around the world. And from a real world standpoint, we are getting confirmation from the companies we own that things are doing, you know, certainly improving in certain areas booming. So what does that mean? Uh, well, we have uh, added to what we consider to be a little bit more cyclical parts of, uh, of, of, the, of our dream team. Uh, we've added to high quality bank franchises. Uh, we've bought travel and leisure companies that obviously will uh, benefit when uh, cross-border travel returns. And something that we haven't done for a while, we've actually uh, added to some of our energy and natural resource exposure, uh, low cost companies that we think have fairly unique assets. Uh, now, don't take that to mean we've completely gone all in on this sort of inflationary trade. We've sort of, this has been a slight call it calibration towards these uh, businesses, uh, but we still continue to own uh, the companies that we've owned for a very long time, such as Microsoft, Louis Vuitton, Moody's, um, TSMC. So even though we do have this more, call it cyclical tilt, uh, we stay true to our style and have continued to own the really good businesses that we've we've had positions in for a long, long time.